All right, welcome back to the complete web dev series where it is my goal to take you from a complete beginner to a job ready developer. Now, if you're joining this chapter and you haven't gone through the complete uh, web dev series up until this point because maybe you knew a lot of that information, um, then good. Let me tell you who this, is, who this chapter really will be for. First and foremost, it's for all the people who have been following along from the beginning, from chapter zero. So if you're a beginner uh, and you've gone through all the previous chapters, uh, including the object-oriented programming chapter uh, that we just finished, uh, you're in good shape. If you um, have a little bit of experience with, with web development and you know HTML and CSS and you um, and you know a little bit about and you know basic PHP like procedural PHP and a little bit about object oriented programming, you're probably pretty good to go. So I would say this is chapters for beginner to intermediate uh, people. If you're an expert, you know you probably won't get too much out of this. I'm gonna take it slow. Um, I suspect this is going to have quite a few videos in this chapter um, because I really do want to explain everything um, as well as I can and make sure I don't leave anyone behind. So we're gonna take it slow. Um, but we are going to be using object-oriented programming and PHP as well as an MVC uh, structure paradigm to build um, to build a CMS. So I might have just said a lot of things you don't understand, but basically we're going to talk about, about what each one of those things are. So first and foremost, what is object-oriented programming? Well, it is a, is a programming paradigm where you program in a way where you package data and the methods or the functionality that you need to manipulate that data together in these objects. And, um, and it's a very powerful way to write and it also gives you the ability to share code easily and reuse code in other projects so i'm a big fan of it um definitely some drawbacks to object-oriented programming but for the most part i think it's an awesome way to program now i also mentioned uh MVC. So what is an MVC? Well, MVC stands for Model View Controller. And um, a lot of people get really confused on this. Uh, I'm going to base I'm going to break it down the way we're going to use MVC. We're not going to use a very traditional version of MVC. Instead, we're going to use a modified version of MVC where the the M stands for model and your model is going to deal is going to deal with all of the data uh, and retrieving and manipulating of data especially as it relates to saving and getting and retrieving information from the database okay so that will be the model the V in MVC is stands for view and this uh, this is where you're going to have all the code that the that is presentational so all your HTML and CSS and all of that that's going to be uh, controlled by the view um, the C in MVC is for controller and controller uh, basically is the brains or whatever that it it actually will call the model and get whatever data it needs and it will render the view and it will handle any sort of interactions like post submissions or button clicks or things like that that we have um, so that will be the controller so that's just a way that we're going to going to organize code in this uh, structure it's a, it's a very common practice and so I want to get you kind of used to that um, now the other thing that we're going to talk about is uh, CMS what what are we building well first and foremost CMS is just stands for content management system and a content management system is it could be anything really um, you can think of WordPress if you've seen that before where but a content management system um, is where you you build out a website that can have dynamic content added to it later on without additional programming. So you program a way in for someone to like an admin user or something like that to log in and add a new, a new blog to the blog site or uh, add a new product to a shopping cart, that sort of thing. So that is a content management system. So we're going to be uh, building a content management system that has login and registration and it also has um, the ability for us to use different types of logged in users um, so we can have an administrator or an editor and they have different permission levels and can access different parts of the website. Um, so if that sounds interesting, we're going to be doing that in this. 
And we're going to be using object-oriented programming to do everything, okay? So um, in the last chapter, we kind of gave you a crash course in object-oriented programming. I know a lot of you are going to be confused and not really know why you would do that. Well, this chapter is going to answer that, and we're going to see just how powerful object-oriented programming is. And I'm going to do my best to go slow and explain every line of code so that's not confusing. Okay, so let me just jump into my screen and let's show you exactly what we're going to be building here. Um, and and basically this is a blog website um, and if you these are going to be articles that you can write and add to the blog website it's going to have you know um, a featured image here and then um, it's going to have a little blurb and it'll have the title and then a short it'll show a short part of the beginning of the article to catch people's attention um, and if they click read more it will take them to the full article we'll have the image the title the category um, it will have the author here and it will have the contents of the article now if they click on the author um, it will take them and actually uh, it will uh, be able to segment by by author. So if you have multiple authors on the site, you can see articles just by them. You can also do the same thing with categories. And if you notice that our our uh, menu up here is going to be dynamically built um, so that we can have uh, the what when we add a new category, it'll automatically add it to the menu here. And when we have new authors, they'll be in the menu. And so uh, it's going to also have pagination. We'll learn about pagination. Um, and then, like I said, it has a login system here. And uh, so you can log in as a user. And if you do so, I need to log in here. I might have a, okay, so if you log in, now it says, hello, Curtis. And now over here, I can log out. I still have access to everything I did before, but I could go to the author portal. And this is gonna be the back end site where we, we can add new articles. Um, so here's a list of the current articles that are on here. And from here, we can edit and delete these articles. Um, we can add a new article. Um, so here's a form that we're going to be used. Uh, and then it's going to have either public or private status. Uh, we'll be able to choose a category or leave it uncategorized. Um, and then, and then uh, we can have a title. And then the body will have a WYSIWYG here that we could use to style up the body a little bit. And then we'll also have a way to upload images uh, down here. So, and again, we'll do the same thing with categories. So you can add a category, you can edit and delete them. Um, and then the users, this is where um, some of the cool stuff comes in. You can add a new user um, or you can edit the user or you can even block a user. So let's say we have an author and the author starts putting malicious things on the site and we don't want to necessarily remove their old articles, but we'd like to block them. Well, we can actually click this block button and uh well can't do it on yourself so that was obviously a bug i might have to fix that now but uh let me just go back here to this but anyway you can block an art article yeah it says here that the user is blocked um probably shouldn't allow you to block yourself uh but we might fix that in the lesson but you can add a user and then you can choose when you add a user if they're going to have um an admin privilege or an editor privilege. And basically the difference in this uh, content management system that we're building is that administrators can add more authors, um, but authors or editors can only add articles. And so uh, that is a little bit of the different permissions that they can have. So I'm gonna go here and see if I can fix that uh, real quick. I'm gonna go to my users table and I am blocked here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set that back to zero in the database directly. Um, and now I should be able to uh, log in again. And now if I go back here to the author portal, I can also go to users. And then when I add a new user, you, get, you pick the role. Either they're going to be an author or an admin. And based upon what permissions you give them, uh, they will be able to do that sort of thing. So it's kind of like a really stripped down version of WordPress, uh, just a very basic blog website. But by doing all this, we're going to learn a lot of concepts and we're going to learn um, some really cool tricks uh, that we can use in every single project. And in fact, we're going to write uh, some classes that you can use in every project. So we'll have a database class that you could start up a project and you could just simply put that class in your 
project and you use that to interact with your database and it'll be real familiar to you and you can use it all the time. So you have to write it once, it'll be a little complex, but then after that, you just have to know how to use it. You don't know how to, need to even remember how it works. Um, but anyhow, that's the, that is what's cool about object-oriented programming. So if this seems interesting to you, um, or if you're along the journey for the complete web dev series, I encourage you to go through this entire chapter, although I do suspect that this chapter is going to be one of the longer ones uh, because this is kind of a big project to shove into one chapter. All right, with that said, guys, we won't waste any more time, and I'll see you in the next video where we are going to get started building this thing. So I will see you guys there. Peace out.